Good morning, Center Grove, uh, Church of Christ. Good afternoon to some. Uh, we hope that all is well with you on this wonderful Wednesday. We thank God for blessing us all to wake up. Uh, we thank God for his many, many blessings in our lives. And, uh, thank him for our health, our jobs, our families. Um, just to be able to get up today and see his sunshine. I got some sunshine coming in on here on the left side, but uh, thank God for everything. And uh, we certainly want to uh, keep Brother Andy Moss Sr. in our prayers as he continues to heal and recover uh, and strengthen, be strengthened. And that we pray for him and pray for his family as well as uh, many members who uh, may be suffering, may have lost loved ones during this pandemic. Uh, maybe going through their different trials, there's different storms in their lives, and just know that God is God, and he is able to bring you through it. Uh, if he can bring you to it, he certainly has the power to bring you through it. We have an awesome message on today from the Word of God uh, that I'm going to share with you. It's blessed my life, and I hope it blesses your life um, on today. We're going to be looking into the New Testament uh, at a few scriptures, not a whole lot of them will be uh, in Ephesians as well as in uh, Colossians. These are New Testament um, uh, books. Uh, and uh, we want to share some, some good news and um, some, a message that's going to refocus us as children of, of God. You know, I remember about 14 years ago, um, I was standing in the front hallway uh, of my soon-to-be mother and father-in-law uh, preparing for uh, our wedding day. Uh, my mother was standing in front of me and I remember her painting a flower uh, to my lapel and she was whispering to me how proud she was uh, uh, of the man that I'd become. Uh, she told me that Sherida deserved me and I certainly deserve uh, her. Uh, I remember that day I had a white tuxedo on all the way down to my white shoes. Boy, I was as sharp as a kitchen knife, I tell you, if I can say so myself. Um, you know, I wanted to be dressed for that great occasion. Um, it was challenging getting ready for that occasion. And uh, brides and grooms know what I'm talking about. I remember fasting and praying and getting deeper into the word of God because I wanted to not just be a husband, but I wanted to be the husband that God wanted me to be uh, for my wife. Uh, I also realized I had to make some lifestyle changes. I had to drop some bad habits that I had picked up along um, the way. And um, I had to choose to stop eating um, the Whopper cheeseburgers. Amen. Uh, Lord have mercy. It was difficult letting go of those Whopper cheeseburgers. I, I had to choose to start walking and exercising so I can get into my tuxedo. Uh, I exercise sometimes for two hours a day. Um, and all of a sudden I began to see the results. Um, I noticed that my mind became uh, clearer. Uh, I be began to have better control uh, over my, my eating habits and certain habits that I had developed. I found myself losing weight. I lost almost 30 pounds uh, and I wanted to look the best for that occasion. And all the hard work that I put in, all the sacrifice was finally about to pay off. As I stood there under the arch in the backyard of my soon to be in-laws, I began to sweat profusely. My heart began racing uh, through my shirt, uh, but my nervousness was disturbed by the mumbling and the whispers of the crowd. All of a sudden, I understood why. Because my bride, the most beautiful woman in the world, was entering the proximity of the crowd. And everybody stood up at her arrival. You know, often I, I think about those who are in Christ Jesus. Those of us who are living um, and following Christ, who have dedicated their lives to being better uh, Christians to, to follow Jesus all the way to glory. Those who don't give up in their faith in Christ. Those who live and uh, even those who have died striving to walk in God's will. Those who forgave others 
who wronged them, who sinned, but didn't allow or didn't wallow in those, in those sins, but got things right with the Lord. Those who challenged themselves to love all people, no matter what color they, they are, who, uh, no matter what side of the political aisle they're on, who fed those who were hungry, who gave water to those who needed something to drink, um, who took uh, food and things to those who lived in car, car, uh, cardboard boxes, and um, those who uh, tried to do good in the lives uh, of others while uh, they live, will one day encounter Christ coming back in all of his glory and in his splendor with eternal uh, healing in his hands, with the life-giving wind in his wings, with eternal life as his award, will breach the atmosphere of this universe once again uh, for his final triumph. And we begin to gather uh, those in the house of God, which is described in scripture as the bride of Christ. On, on today, I want to show you a picture of what this great day, this great wedding day will be like. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles to the book of Ephesians. Book of Ephesians, chapter number five. We'll read just a few verses here. I want you to pick up uh, with me at verse number 22. Ephesians, chapter number five, in verse 22. Let us go into, uh, into prayer. Our Father God, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for life, Lord God. We thank you for this very moment that we have to, to feast on your word. We pray, Father God, that the message rings out loud and clear into our hearts, Lord, that one day you will uh, send your son, Jesus Christ, back here to receive um, his people. Father God, to judge this world, and we pray, Father God, as we prepare ourselves that you will give us the time to get things right. Uh, continue to be patient with us, Lord God, as we struggle uh, oftentimes with sin and struggle with those things that cause uh, a hindrance to our relationship with you. Lord, we pray that you forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings, Lord God. Help us to be better today than we were on yesterday. May we get rid of those things, Father God, that cause us uh, to stumble. And uh, we know that the strength has been given to us through the Holy Spirit that is designed to help guide us and to strengthen us and to lead us into more of a prosperous way. We love you, Father God, and we ask that you will fill us up this hour. Make us better. Heal us in those places that we're wounded. Strengthen us in those areas that we are weak. Give us clarity in those areas that we're foggy. May we please you this day. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Ephesians chapter number five, verse number 22, Paul says, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. His body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, get this, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives and their own body. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. You see, Paul writes to the church in this section to point out that husbands and wives are subject to each other in a marital sense, but they both should ultimately be subjective to Christ, who is the object of their subjection. As we subject ourselves to Christ as his bride, this analogy should help us to the point uh, Paul is making. The point is that we must know our position in Christ Jesus and our sacred duty to him and to those who, were, who we are knitted together with in Christ as members of the church of Christ. 
and we should be spiritually adorned in holy fashion. You see, our external adornment, which is our outward conduct, should be a reflection of the inner adornment, which, our, which is our faithfulness and our commitment to the Lord in our hearts. The question I want to leave with you on today, I want to open up and I want, to, I want you to think about is, are you dressed for the wedding? Are you dressed for the wedding? Turn with me again uh, in your Bibles to the book of Colossians. It's just the uh, next book over. Colossians chapter number three. We're going to look at some rules for holy living and preparing yourselves for the wedding. I want you to look uh, at verse 12 with me. It says, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourselves with compassion. Clothe yourselves with kindness. Clothe yourselves with humility and gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And all, over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful, Paul says. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. You see, Paul was teaching the Christians at Colossae some principles of preparation they needed to heed to because they were required to be properly dressed in order to attend heaven's wedding occasion. Amen. These principles of preparations are critical for us on today to prepare ourselves as well. The first preparation I want to share with you on today is that we need to get refocused on the wedding day of Christ because he will return for his bride. Refocusing on the wedding day. That's the point. Refocusing on the wedding day. When you think of that word focus it is defined as a state in which one clearly distinguishes who and what is the centerpiece of their most important interest. We must keep the wedding day in focus. In the forefront of our minds, brothers and sisters, we must develop a laser-like focus on spiritual things and not just on the things that the world thinks is important, but what God says is important. Paul identifies this type of focus and thinking as heavenly or spiritual thinking. He addresses the mindset that we should have unless we believe and obey the gospel in vain. Paul appears to our conscience in a way that says, if you are truly focused on taking your salvation seriously, we, you must die to your passions and your agenda and focus on the cross daily. You see, focusing on the cross is not just going to worship, y'all. Uh, it's not just checking into the Zoom call at worship times and being a visitor there on the dark screen. But it's about being a participant in your day-to-day -day walk with Christ Jesus. Focusing on the spiritual things is not just reading your Bibles occasionally, but feasting on it daily. Focusing on heavenly things is not being glued to the TV, uh, believing that the government will make everything better, but it's believing that God is going to work all things out for the good of those who love him. You see, keeping the wedding day in focus consists of us staying committed to the word of God and allowing the Holy Spirit to guide our thinking to adjust our attitudes, to align our behavior, to season our speech to the point where we are not just hearers of the word of God, but we are active 
doers of the word. You see, in this world, Satan, the, the liar and the great deceiver, is doing a great job of blinding people and blinding some of us who are in Christ Jesus with the distractions of this human experience. See, if we're, we're not careful, we will be so concerned about our personal goals to get rich, uh, being popular on YouTube, uh, competing for the attention of many others on social media, that it will take our focus off of heavenly things. Have we forgotten what Jesus said? What does it profit the man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Have we forgotten what Jesus said when he says, what can a man exchange for his soul? Have we forgotten about the days of Noah? When people have been warned that a day of destruction was going to come, but they kept living the way they wanted to. They kept marrying who they wanted to marry, doing what they wanted to do. But when the rain came down, and the flood waters rose, they were drowned in a horrible death. You see, this is a reminder for you. Don't lose your head in 2021. Don't lose your focus now because of the political problems. Don't lose your faith right now because of the pandemic, y'all. The times of destructions are here. The chaos has just begun. The riots are not going to stop. The killing is not going to relent. Injustice will continue. Keep your focus on the wedding day and be prepared for his coming. He will return when least expected. Like a thief in the night that kicks down your door and while you are sleeping in your cozy beds. You see, today there are many distractions, y'all. There are many trends and there are many culture movements and social changes that appear to be what society needs. But what many don't realize today is that it's disappointing God. You see, we don't want to disappoint God, do we? That's why we have to prepare ourselves by refocusing on the wedding day, Christians, and help bring as many people as we can into the fellowship with Christ by the way that we live our lives and by the way we share the message of the cross. You see, many things happened in 2021, or rather in 2020, that we consider as tragic. And many things were tragic. But look at it this way. Thank God for 2020. They say 2020 vision helps you see those who have 2020 vision are able to see clearer than those who don't. Well, 2020 was a year that helped us refocus. Use those things to refocus your mind and your heart on what is to come, and that is that Jesus will return one day. The question would be, or the question rather is, are you dressed for the way? The second preparation we need to make to get ready for God's wedding day is to get the proper clothes on spiritually. In Colossians, uh, verse number five, uh, Paul says, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. Paul said, you used to walk in these ways. Amen, we all did, didn't we? He says, you used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. But now, he said, you must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger and rage and malice, slander, filthy language from your lips, do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Church, it's time to take off the old stuff because we got to put on new garments 
to be properly dressed for heaven's occasion. Nobody is supposed to get into the wedding uh, in a jogging suit and some flip-flops. Come on, y'all. None of us gets into a special occasion with some bull horns on our heads. Paul is reminding Christians we must be dressed for heaven's occasion in order for us to <clears throat> impress the groom. Are you putting on love so you can love your neighbor like yourself? Because how can we say we love God in whom we have not seen, but we hate a person who has a different color skin as we do that we see every day? Have you put on faith in God so you don't give in to the devil's depression? Have you put on kindness instead of hatefulness? Are you putting on humility instead of pride? Are you putting on compassion instead of cold heartedness? Have you put on encouragement instead of discouragement? Are you trusting in your money instead of trusting in God? You see, as we continue to take off sinful things and put on Christian apparel, we are preparing ourselves for Christ's return. When the groom who is Christ will come to receive his bride, which is the church, the body, the saved, and present us to his father, it will be the biggest celebration in the history of all things. Amen. Don't you know that everything in this world, church, will fail us? Don't you know the love of money will fail us one day? It will either run out of our bank accounts or having too much of it will ruin us. Have you forgotten that our faith or whether our health will fail us one day? Because if God lets us live long enough, old age will slowly run down this old body. Have you forgotten that popularity will fail you one day? Because there will become a day when people will soon forget your accomplishments. You see, the only person who won't fail us is God. The only thing that will stand the test of time is the word of God. And the only way that we can lose our salvation is that we have to walk away from God. Don't lose your focus, brothers and sisters, today. It's time for us to get ready for the wedding. If you are not a child of God, you get ready by being in Christ Jesus. Romans 10, 17 tells us, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. One has to have faith in God and have faith that and believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 13 through 16 I remember Jesus asked a question, who do men say that I am? Some said that he was Jeremiah. Some said that he was a prophet. Some said that he was Elijah. But Jesus asked the question, who do you say that I am? Oh, Simon, who loved to speak up, said the right thing then. And Simon says, I are the Christ, the son of the living God. Oh, Jesus said, bless you, Simon. Bless you, Simon. For I know flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but our Father who are in heaven. You must believe that Jesus is the son of God. Repent of your sins. Turn to Jesus. Repenting is a turn from one way and go in a different direction. Jesus wants you to come to him. That's why Jesus said, come to me, all you who labor, who are heavy laden, for I will, I will give you rest. Confess that Jesus is the son of God. Go down into the water of grave of baptism, not for the washing off of the filth of the flesh, but an answer toward a good conscience that I believe that Jesus is the son of God and I'm responding in faith. Jesus says, if you do so, I'll save you. I'll save you. You'll become a part of my family, my bride, my church in whom he's going to come back to receive one day. Are you ready for the wedding day? Get yourself ready. Refocus on the wedding. Get rid of the old stuff and put on the new things and be ready for Christ and his return. May you be blessed today. I hope this message will encourage your church to get ready for the wedding day. May God bless you. May he keep you and may he give you peace.